Hi everybody, this is John here and I'm going to talk to you today about imperatives, which are also called commands. So we're going to talk about them in terms of the structure, also how we can use them effectively, and we're going to look finally at a few different options that can be useful. So, the basic structure, it's easy. Usually there's no subject, it's just the verb in its base form. Wash your hands. Don't forget the soap. So notice that the base form here is also going to be using the verb do and not. But again, there's no, uh, there's no subject verb, it's just don't. Practice this every day. So, when do we use this form? Any ideas? One of the things you can do is use them for instructions. Sterilize this thermometer. Another one, giving advice. Maintain a safe distance. Warnings, keep out. Rules. Sign in before each shift. And also, we sometimes will use it to try and be really emphatic. Don't touch that. So this can sometimes be considered rude if it's not really necessary to be so direct. Um, and we'll talk a little bit about ways to make it less direct in a minute. We can be more polite and inclusive by using the word let's before the verb. Let's review the steps. So here, you're, you are kind of including yourself with the people you're speaking to, which can make it feel a little more polite and a little more inclusive. Let's remember the clean towels. Um, so that, that's one way that you can make it a little bit softer while still incorporating this uh, imperative. Now you can also use some clauses to sort of limit the scope of the imperative. When you finish treating a patient, sanitize the instruments. So it's not just sanitize the instruments, you're giving some conditions to it or some time. Don't leave the water running after you finish washing your hands. Again, it's not this that you're telling them, don't leave that water running. You're saying you're connecting it to something else. Notice, and this is for when you're going to write these kinds of things, when you put the command at the beginning of a sentence, you don't need to use a comma, as in the second example. But when you have the time or conditional clause at the beginning, you should use a comma to separate it from the command. Another thing you can do is use always and never to emphasize the instructions. Never reuse instruments before you sanitize them. That's a little bit stronger than don't reuse them. Always use a clean towel when washing your hands. Again, it's adding an extra layer of emphasis. So now I want you to think about how and when you use the imperative at home, when you're sitting around at home after finishing your homework, when you go out with your friends, do you often do you sometimes use that? How about at school, either talking with classmates or with professors or in your writing? And I also want you to think, how might that be used in a workplace or a healthcare environment? And in what circumstances? Well, I hope this has been useful for you, and thanks so much.